Timaeus Locrus by Plato, translated by George Burgess. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Geoffrey Edwards. The Treatise of Timaeus the Locrian on the Soul of the World and Nature. Timaeus the Locrian asserted this that of all the things in the universe there are two causes, one, mind, the cause of things existing according to reason, the other, necessity, the cause of things existing by some force, according to the powers of bodies, and that the former of these is of the nature of the good, and is called God, and the principle of things that are the best. But what come after this, and are co-causes, are referred to necessity. But that, as regards the things in the universe, there are form, matter, and the perceptible, which is, as it were, a production from the two others, and that the former, namely form, is unproduced, and unmoved, and stationary, and of the nature of the same, and perceptible by the mind, and a pattern of such things produced, as exist by a state of change. For that some such thing as this is form spoken of and conceived to be. But matter is a mould, and a mother and a nurse, and procreative of the third kind of being, for receiving the resemblances upon itself, and as it were remoulding them, it perfects these productions. He asserted, moreover, that matter is eternal, not however unmoved, and although it is of itself without form and shapeless, yet it receives every kind of form, and that what is around bodies is divisible, and partakes of the nature of the different, and that persons call, moreover, matter by the name of place and space. These two principles, then, are opposite to each other, of which form has a relation to a male power and a father, but matter to a female and a mother, and being three, they are recognizable by three marks. Form by mind, according to knowledge. Matter by a spurious kind of reasoning, through its not being perceived mentally by a direct course, but by analogy, and their productions by sensation and opinion. Before, then, heaven existed, there were, through reason, form, and matter, and the God who is the worker out of the better, but since what is older is superior to what is younger, and what is put in order before what is without order, the deity, being good, did on seeing that matter receives form, and is altered in every way, but without order, feel the necessity of bringing it into order, and to establish a change from the undefined to the defined, in order that the differences between bodies might have a similar relation, and not receive various turns at haphazard. He made, therefore, this world out of the whole of matter, laying it down as a limit to the nature of being, through its containing all the rest of things in itself, and being one, only begotten, perfect, endued with soul and with reason. For these qualities are superior to the soulless and the irrational, and of a sphere-like body, for this is more perfect than the rest of forms. Desirous, then, of making a very good production, he made it a deity, created, and never to be destroyed by any other cause than the god, who had put it into order, if, indeed, he should ever wish to dissolve it. But on the part of the good there is no rushing forward to the destruction of a very beautiful production. The world, therefore, being such, continues without corruption and destruction, and blessed and it is the best of things created, since it has been produced by the best cause, that looks not to patterns made by hand, but to form in the abstract, and to existence perceived by the mind, to which the created thing, having been carefully adjusted, has become the most beautiful, and to be not wrongly taken in hand. And it is ever perfect according to the things perceived by sense, because the pattern perceived by mind contains in itself all the living things perceived by mind, and has left nothing else out of itself as being the limit of things perceived by mind, as this world is of those perceived by sense. 
and as being solid and perceptible by touch and sight it has a share of earth and fire and of the things between them air and water and it is composed of bodies all perfect which are in it as wholes so that no part might ever be left out of it in order that the body of the universe might be altogether self-sufficient uninjured by corruptions from without and within for apart from these there is nothing else for the things that are put together according to the best proportions and with equal powers neither rule over nor are ruled by each other in turn so that some receive an increase others a decrease but they remain in a bond of union indissoluble according to a proportion the very best for when there are three terms whatever and their intervals are fixed according to the same proportion as regards each other we then perceive that after the manner of an extended string the middle term is to the first what the third is to it and taking also inversely and by alternation according to the fitting of their places and order and it is impossible for every one to arrange numerically these so as not to have any quality of force the world too is in a good state as regards its shape and movement as regards the former in being a sphere so that it is similar to itself on all sides and is able to contain all the rest of shapes of the same kind as itself as regards the latter in exhibiting forever the change dependent on a circle now the sphere alone is able in a state of quietness and of motion to preserve a fitness in the same place so as neither to leave it nor to receive another place through its being on every side equally distant from the centre and being very smooth to exactness as regards its external appearance it has no need of mortal organs which are fitted to and carried through the rest of animals for the sake of their wants but the soul of the world has the deity united with the centre and let it outwards investing the world wholly with it and making it a mixture of form undivided and of substance divided so as to become one mixture from those two for which world he mixed up two forces the origin of motion one connected with the same the other with the different which soul being mixed with difficulty was mixed not in the easiest way now all these proportions are combined harmonically according to numbers which proportions he has divided according to a scale scientifically so that a person is not ignorant of what things and by what means the soul is combined which the deity has not ranked after the substance of the body for as we say that which is before is in greater honour as regards both power and time but he made it older by taking the first of unities which is three hundred eighty four now of these the first being assumed it is easy to reckon the double and triple and all the terms together with their complements and eighths must amount to one hundred and fourteen thousand six hundred ninety five and the divisions likewise are one hundred fourteen thousand six hundred ninety five god the eternal the chief ruler of the universe and its creator the mind alone beholds but that which is produced we behold by the sight both this world and its parts how many soever they are in heaven which as being ethereal must be divided into kinds so that some may be of the nature relating to the same and some to the different of which the former lead from without all that are within them along the general movement from the rising east to the setting west but the latter relating to the nature of the different lead from within the portions that are carried along from west to east and are self-moved and they are whirled round and along according as it may happen by the movement of the same which possesses in the world a superior power now the movement of the different being divided according to an harmonical proportion assumes the order of seven circles the moon then as being the nearest to the earth exhibits its monthly revolution but the sun after her completes his orbit in the period of a year but there are two that run an equal course with the sun namely the stars of mercury and juno 
which the many call the star of Venus and Lucifer. For shepherds and the masses of mankind are not wise in sacred astronomy, nor skilled in the risings that take place in the west and east. For the same star becomes at one time visible in the west, when it follows the sun so far as not to be hidden by its light, and at another time in the east, when it leads on the sun and rises before it, and is the herald of day. Hence the star of Venus becomes, through its running together with the sun, frequently Lucifer, but not always, since there are many that become so, both of those that are planets and are not, since every star of any magnitude that is seen above the horizon before the sun rises heralds the day. But the three other stars, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, have their peculiar velocities and unequal years, and they complete their course while making their periods of effulgence, and of being visible, and of obscuration, and eclipse, and giving birth to accurate risings and settings. Moreover, they complete their appearances conspicuously in the east or west according to their position as regards the sun, who during the day exhibits its course from rising in the east to setting in the west, but during the night it makes a movement in another direction from west to east, while it is carried on by the movement of the same whereas during the year it is carried according to its own inherent motion. From these two kinds of motion it rolls out a spiral, creeping according to one portion in the time of a day, but whirled round under the sphere of the fixed stars, according to each revolution of darkness and day. Now these revolutions men call the portions of time which the deity has arranged together with the world, for the stars did not exist before in the world, and hence there was neither a year nor periods of seasons by which this generated time is measured, and which is the representation of the time not generated, which we call eternity. For as this heaven has been produced according to an eternal pattern, namely the idea-like world, so according to a pattern, namely eternity, has this time been made together with the world. The earth, fixed at the centre, becomes the hearth of the gods, and the boundary of darkness and day, producing both settings and risings according to the cuttings off made by the things that form the boundary, as we circumscribe by a cutting off the things of earth, sufficient for sight. And it is the oldest of bodies within the circle of heaven, and neither has water at any time been produced without earth, nor air without moisture, nor could fire continue without moisture and the materials which it burns, so that the earth is fixed as the root and base of all other substances upon its own balance. The principles of things produced are matter as the substratum and form in the abstract, as the reason of each shape, and the result from these two are earth and water, and air and fire, the creation of which is of this kind. Now every body is composed of surfaces, and this is composed of triangles, of which one is rectangular, the half of a square, with two equal sides, the other, whose sides are all unequal, having the greater angle thrice the size of the lesser, while the least angle in it is the third of a right angle, and the middle one is the double of the least, for it is two parts out of three, but the greatest is a right angle, being one and a half greater than the middle one, and the triple of the least. Now this triangle, with all its sides unequal, is the half of an equilateral triangle, cut into two equal parts by a line let down from the apex to the base. Now in each of these triangles there is a right angle, but in one the two sides about the right angle are equal, in the other all the sides are unequal. Now let this be called a scalene triangle, but the other, the half of a square, be considered the principle of the constitution of the earth. For the square produced from this scalene triangle is composed of four half squares, and from such a square is produced the cube, a body the most stationary and steady in every way, 
having six sides and eight angles, and on this account the earth is a body the heaviest and most difficult to be moved, and its substance not to be changed into anything else, through its not having a communion with a triangle of another kind. For the earth alone has the half-square as its peculiar element, and this is the element of the three other substances, fire, air, and water. For on the half-triangle, being put together six times, there is generated from it an equilateral solid triangle, of which is formed the pyramid, having four faces, and their angles equal, the form of fire, which is the most easy to be moved, and made up of the finest particles. After this is the octahedron, with eight faces and six angles, the element of air, and the third is the icosahedron, with twenty faces and twelve angles, the element of water, made up of particles the most numerous and heaviest. These, then, as being composed of the same element, are changed into each other. But the deity has made the dodecahedron the image of the universe as being the nearest to the sphere. Fire, then, by the fineness of its particles, passes through all things, and air through the rest of things, with the exception of fire, and water through earth. All things are therefore full, and leave no vacuum, but they are brought together by the revolving movement of the universe, and are pressed against and rubbed by each other in turn, and produce the never-failing change from production to destruction. By making use of these, the deity put together this world, sensible to touch through the particles of earth, and to sight through those of fire, which too are the extremes, but through the particles of air and water he has bound the world together by the strongest chain, namely proportion, which is able to hold together both itself and the things kept in subjection through it. Now, if the thing bound together is a plain surface, one middle term is sufficient, but if a solid there will be need of two. With two middle terms, then, he combined two extremes, so that as fire is to air, air might be to water, and water to earth, and by alternation, as fire is to water, air might be to earth, and by inversion, as earth is to water, water might be to air, and air to fire, and by alternation, as earth is to air, so water might be to fire. Now, since all are equal in power, their ratios are in a state of equality. This world, then, is one, through the bond of the deity, made according to proportion. Now each of these four substances possesses many forms, fire, those of flame, and burning, and luminousness, through the inequality of the triangles in each of them. In the same manner, air is partly clear and dry, and partly turbid and foggy, and water partly flowing, and partly congealed, according as it is snow, hoar-frost, hail, ice, and that which is moist is in one respect flowing, as honey, oil, but in another is compact, as pitch, wax, and of the forms of what is compact there is a portion fusible, as gold, silver, copper, tin, lead, and purified iron, and a portion friable, as sulphur, pitch, nitre, salt, alum, and stones of a similar kind. After putting together the world, the deity planned the creation of living beings, subject to death, in order that, being perfect himself, he might work it out perfectly according to his image. He mixed up, therefore, the soul of man out of the same proportions and powers, and, after taking the particles and distributing them, he delivered them over to nature the alternative and she, succeeding him in working out living beings, both mortal and ephemeral, the soul of whom she brought in flowingly, some from the moon, others from the sun, and some too from the other bodies that wander in the portion of the different, with the exception of one power belonging to the same, which she mixed up in the rational portion of the soul, as the image of wisdom in those of a happy fate. Now, of the soul of man, a portion is rational and intellectual, and a portion irrational and unintellectual. But of the logical, the better portion is from the nature of the same. 
but the worse is from that of the different, and each is seated around the head, so that the other portions of the soul and body may minister to it, as being the uppermost of the whole tabernacle. But of the irrational portion, that which represents passion is around the heart, and that which represents desire is around the liver. But the principle of the body, and the root of the marrow is the brain, in which is the leadership, and from this, like an effusion, flows through the backbone what remains, from which are separated the particles for seed and reason. But of the marrow, the surrounding defences are the bones, of which the flesh is the covering and concealment. And to the nerves he united joints by ligatures suited for their movement, and of the internal members there are some for the sake of nourishment and some for safety, and of the movements some of those from without are conveyed to the intelligent place of perception, but others, not falling under the power of apprehension, are unperceived, either through the bodies affected being too earth-like, or through the movements being too feeble, and as many as cause nature to start from itself are painful, but such as cause it to remain in itself are called pleasures. But amongst the senses the deity has lit up in us the sight for viewing objects in the heavens, and for the reception of knowledge, while as the recipient of speech and melody he has implanted in us hearing, of which he who is deprived from his birth will become dumb, nor be able to give vent to any portion of speech, and hence persons say that this sense is related the nearest to speech. But as many of the affections of the body as have a name are so called with reference to the touch, and some too from their tendency to its seat. For the touch judges of the properties connected with life, such as warmth, coldness, dryness, moisture, smoothness, roughness, and of things yielding, opposing, soft, hard. The touch, too, decides upon what is heavy and light, but reason defines them by their inclination to the middle of the world, and from the middle. Now men mean the same thing by below and middle, for the centre of a sphere is the below, but that which is above it to the circumference is the up. Now what is warm appears to consist of fine particles, and such as cause bodies to separate, but what is cold consists of gross particles, and such as cause bodies to condense. The circumstances relating to taste are similar to those relating to touch, for by concretion and secretion, and further by entering the pores and by assuming shapes, substances are either rough or smooth, for those that cause the tongue to melt away or that scrape it appear to be rough but those that act moderately in scraping appear brackish, but those that inflame or separate the skin acrid, but their opposites, the smooth and sweet, are reduced to a juicy state. Of smelling the kinds have not been defined, for from their percolating through narrow pores that are too stiff to be either brought together or separated, things seem to be sweet-smelling or bad-smelling from the putrefaction or concoction of the earth and substances like the earth. But a vocal sound is a percussion in the air, arriving at the soul through the ears, the pores of which proceed until they reach the liver, and amongst them there is breath by the movement of which hearing exists. Now of the voice and hearing that portion which is quick is acute, but that which is slow is grave but the medium is the most in harmony, and that which is much and diffused is great, but that which is little and compressed is small, and that which is arranged according to musical proportions is in tune, but that which is unarranged and out of those proportions is out of tune and not to be properly adjusted. The fourth kind of things relating to the senses is the most multiform and various, and they are called objects of sight, in which are all kinds of colours, and an infinity of coloured substances, but the principal are four, white, black, brilliant, and red, for all the others are produced from a mixture of these. Now what is white causes the vision to expand, but what is black to contract, just as what is warm is able to expand the touching, 
but what is cold to contract it, and what is rough naturally contracts the tasting, but what is sharp dilates it. And it is natural for the covering of animals that live in the air to be nourished and kept together by the food being distributed by the veins through the whole mass in the manner of a stream, conveyed as it were by channels, and moistened by the breath which diffuses it and carries it to the extremities. And respiration is produced through there being no vacuum in nature, while the air, as it flows in, is inhaled in the place of that which is exhaled, through unseen mouths, through which the drops of sweat are visible on the surface, but a portion is got rid of by the natural warmth of the body. It is necessary, then, for a portion equal to what has been got rid of to be introduced in its place, for if not, there would be a vacuum which is impossible, for the animal would no longer be flowing together and one, when the covering had been separated by the vacuum. Now the same organization takes place in the case of lifeless substances according to the analogy of respiration, for the gourd and amber are the likenesses of respiration. Now the breath flows through the body to an orifice outwards, and is introduced in turn through respiration by the mouth and nostrils, and again, after the manner of the Euripus, is carried in turn to the body, which is extended according to the flowing out. The gourd, too, when the air within it is got rid of by fire, attracts to itself moisture, and amber, when the air is separated from it, receives an equal substance. Now, all nourishment is from the heart, as the root, and from the stomach, as a fountain, and is conveyed to the body, to which, if it be moistened by more than what flows out, there is said to be an increase, but if by less, a decay. But the point of perfection is the boundary between those two, and is considered to exist in an equality of efflux and influx. But when the joints of the system are broken, should there be no longer any passage for the breath, or the nourishment be not distributed, the animal dies. Now there are many things hurtful to life and the causes of death. One kind is called disease, and of diseases the commencement is the want of harmony between the principal powers, when the simple powers, such as heat or cold, or moisture or dryness, are too much or deficient, and after these the turns and alterations of the blood from corruption, and the deterioration of the flesh, when wasting away should the turns take place according to the changes to what is acid, or brackish, or bitter in the blood, or wastings away of the flesh. For from hence arises the generation of bile and of phlegm, and diseased juices, and the rottenness of liquids, weak indeed, unless deeply seated, but difficult to cure, when their commencement is generated from the bones, and painful if in a state of inflammation from the marrow. The last of disorders is those of the breath, bile, and phlegm, when they increase and flow into situations foreign to them, or into places inappropriate, for then, by laying hold of the situation belonging to what are better, and by driving away what are congenial, they fix themselves there, injuring the bodies and resolving them into those very things. These, then, are the sufferings of the body, and from these are many diseases of the soul, some from one faculty, others from others. Of the perceptive soul, the disease is a difficulty of perception, of the recollecting, a forgetfulness, of the forward, a want of desire and of eagerness, of that subject to affections, a violent suffering and excited madness, of the rational, an indisposition to learn and think. But of wickedness, the commencements are pleasures and pains, desires and fears, inflamed by the body and mixed up with the mind, and are called by various names. For there are loves and regrets, and desires let loose, and passions on the stretch, and heavy resentments, and appetites of various kinds, and pleasures without measure. In all simplicity, to be unreasonably disposed towards affections, and to be under their rule, is the limit of virtue and vice for to abound in them, or to be superior to them, places us in a good or bad position. 
against such impulses the temperament of our bodies is able to cooperate greatly whether quick or hot or varied in various ways by leading us to melancholy and violent lewdness and certain parts when affected by a flowing produce itchings and forms of bodies more like a state of inflammation than of health through which a sinking of the spirits and a forgetfulness and a silliness and a fearfulness are worked out sufficient too are the habits in which persons are brought up in the city or at home and their daily food enervating by luxury the soul or fortifying it for strength for the living out of doors and simple fare and gymnastic exercises and the morals of companions produce the greatest effect in the way of virtue and of vice and these causes are derived from parents and the elements rather than from ourselves provided there be no remissness on our part in keeping aloof from acts of duty and for the animal to be in a good condition it is requisite for the body to possess the better properties under its control namely health and correct perception and strength and beauty now the principles of beauty are a symmetry as regards its parts and as regards the soul for nature has arranged like an instrument the body to be subservient to and in harmony with the subjects of life and it is requisite for the soul likewise to be brought into harmony with its analogous good qualities namely in the case of temperance as the body is in the case of health and in that of prudence as in the case of correct perception and in that of fortitude as in the case of vigour and strength and in that of justice as in the case of beauty of these the beginning is from nature but their middle portions and end are from carefulness, those relating to the body through the gymnastic and medical arts, those to the soul through instruction and philosophy, for these are the powers that nourish and give a tone to the body and soul by means of labor and gymnastic exercise and a pureness of diet, some through druggings applied to the body and others through discipline applied to the soul by means of punishments and reproaches for by encouragement they give strength and excite to an onward movement and exhort to advantageous works the art of the gymnastic trainer and its nearest relative that of the medical man do on being ordered to attend upon bodies bring their powers to the greatest symmetry and cause the blood to be pure and the breath to flow equably in order that if there be any diseased virulence there the powers of the blood and breath may be in a state of strength but music and its leader philosophy that have been ordained by the gods and laws for the regulation of the soul accustom and persuade and partly compel the irrational to obey reason and the too irrational passion and desire to become the one mild the other quiet so as not to be moved without reason nor to be unmoved when the mind incites either to desire or enjoy something for this is the definition of temperance namely docility and firmness and intelligence and philosophy the highest in honour after cleansing the soul of false opinions have introduced knowledge recalling the mind from excess of ignorance and setting it free for the contemplation of divine things in which to occupy oneself with a self-sufficiency as regards the affairs of man and with an abundance for the commensurate period of life is a happy state now he to whom the deity has happened to assign something of a good fate is led through opinion the most true to the happiest life but if he be morose and indocile let the punishment that comes from law and reason follow him bringing with it the fears ever on the stretch both those that proceed from heaven and those from hades how that punishments not to be begged off are laid up for the unhappy below and the rest of the things which i praise the ionic poet of old for making the crime defiled to suffer for their wickedness for as we sometimes render bodies sound by means of diseased substances if they will not yield to the more healthy so we restrain the soul by false reasoning if it will not be led by true and they would be called of necessity strange punishments 
since the souls of cowards enter by a change into the bodies of women who are given to insulting conduct and those of the blood-stained into the bodies of wild beasts for punishment and of the lascivious into the forms of sows and boars and of the light-minded and elated into the shapes of air-traversing birds and of those who do nothing learn nothing and think of nothing into that of aquatic animals who do nothing but on all these matters has nemesis given a judgment at a second period together with the deities who preside over murderers and those under the earth the inspectors of human affairs to whom god the leader of all has entrusted the administration of the world filled with gods and men and the rest of living beings as many as have been made by the demiurges according to the best image of a form not begotten and eternal and to be perceived by the mind. End of Timaeus Locrus